This video is a critique of 343 under the leadership of Bonnie Ross and her crew. Now that literally every suit wearer is gone from her regime, I want people to understand how bad 343 had failed Halo, which is part of the reason I made the first video saying how 343 is a bad studio. And I hope making these company critique videos can help change Halo positively so we can have a better product in the future. And the main critique I wanna focus on with 343 today is the fact that they are constantly trying to follow trends to catch the broader audience for the Halo IP. And examples of this would be the gameplay changes they did with Halo 4, making it more like Call of Duty, or the advanced movement they added in Halo 5, copying games like Titanfall and Call of Duty again, and even the free-to-play model that they used is copied from Fortnite, Apex, Warzone, and other games that have had a great amount of success doing this free-to-play life service model. And this is me being a little bit more opinionated, but I think the reason they changed the art style from the Bungie Halos to the 343 Halos is one, because they wanted to show that they were a different gaming studio and had their own style. And two, because I think they didn't find the Halo art style that was under Bungie to be profitable and they wanted a more modern look. And I know this might sound crazy, but I honestly think they took inspiration from the Transformer movies made by Michael Bay for their art style. And again, I might be crazy for saying that, but with how bulky and how much detail was on the Spartans compared to the more minimalistic Bungie, you know, smooth armor that even 343 themselves would go back to, it just makes sense to me. When I hear 343 talk about how they want to get the broader audience, it always makes me think that they really don't understand Halo. And the reason I say that is because it's like, Halo already has the broader audience appeal. From basically 2001 when it began under Bungie to 2010 when Bungie left it, Halo was pretty much peak. It was doing good. Like sure, there was a little slip with Reach, but honestly, Bungie didn't care. It was whatever. It wasn't gonna be their IP anymore, so they were gonna do crazy stuff with it. And another thing that makes me think 343 doesn't understand Halo is the fact that they don't understand what the Halo audience wants. It doesn't matter if you are a social enjoyer or a MLG sweat, you have not been happy with Halo Infinite these past almost two years. For the ranked side of Halo, you have seen a lack of ranked game mode variety like we saw in every other Halo, and you've also seen a lack of dev action for long periods of time when pros and ranked casuals want stuff gone like Sword and Mangler, and the rank system is inferior to Halo MCC's 1 through 50 system, or even Halo 5 system, because of the exclusion of stuff like the champion rank. And it's crazy to me we have not seen the champion rank, because once you hit Onyx, you've beaten Halo ranked. Like, there's no reason to go on, in my opinion. Of course, if you're like a professional player or something, it makes sense. But when I hit Onyx during the Season 2 reset for ranked doubles, I stopped playing. It was like, okay, I got everything I could earn. I don't care about hitting Onyx 1700 or 1800 or 1600. You don't get anything for it. Like, oh wow, the number goes up. It's not like people can check it unless they go to Halo Tracker or something. On the social mode side of things, we haven't seen staple game modes like Infection, even though it is coming in Season 4. It almost took two years, a year and seven months if you want to be specific. And there's still no return of Griff Ball, Ricochet, and game modes in general for Halo Infinite. And even when game modes do return, they usually rotate out so you don't even get to play them for long. And examples of what I'm talking about is there are times in Halo Infinite where there's no snipers, there's no doubles, and there's no FFA game mode variants at all that you can play. And the worst thing in my opinion is that Halo Infinite not only did it not release with Forge, it took a year to get Forge in the custom game browser. So for a whole year of Halo Infinite's life, you know, the time where it'll be the most populated, the custom game community was a fish without water. And I don't know who at 343 thought it was okay that we should wait a year for Forge in the custom game browser. But here's the news flash. One of the biggest deals about Halo is the fact that people can make their own game modes and play Halo the way they want to. If those things aren't there, then that makes Halo a lot less unique than other games. And yeah, it's in there now, but it should have been there at launch when the population was high because that's how you retain a lot of people to keep playing your life service games that'll keep buying your microtransactions slash macrotransactions. The thing that 343 themselves said that they needed to sell to keep the lights on. 
It's crazy to me they would not even include one of the most important community pillars of Halo. And I'm specifically saying it needed to be there at launch because first impressions are everything. And the more people get to play Halo the way they want to, the more they stay. Because right now, Halo is at a decline. In about two to three years, unless they can turn it around, which I'll make a video about how I think they can, it's not going to be in the top 50 most played anymore. It is not going to reach any sort of broader audience. People are just going to give it the Fallout 76 and the Cyberpunk treatment. They're just going to be like, oh, it's a bad game, even though they've gotten better over time. Because here's another news flash. Triple A studios with millions to billions of dollars backed behind them shouldn't make the audience that wants to play these games wait months to years for the games to get good. And that's just a plain, simple fact. You are not an indie developer. And yeah, game development might, might be hard, but you know what happens to people when the games are bad when they come out? They'll just go to the new game. They'll literally just go to the new game and play that and leave the old game in the dust. So understand that you're not only fighting for the person's wallet, you're fighting for the person's time because if you're not willing to give them the experience they think they deserve, they'll just go to another game. This isn't 2010 Halo. The, our only choices are not Battlefield, Call of Duty, and Halo. There's Apex, there's Fortnite, there's Battlefront. There's all sorts of games that people still play to this day that they can choose from. You are competing with them to get their time and their money. And if you don't get their time, then you don't get their money. And let me just say this again, 343 just hasn't been able to give the Halo community quality titles and live up to the legacy and standard that Bungie set, starting with Halo CE back in 2001. And under this new leadership, I hope Halo can make a turnaround because Halo is my favorite FPS game and I hate to see it associated with mediocrity and ineptitude like it has been this last decade under 343's care. Thank you for watching the video. I like to keep the comment section of these videos to be like an open discussion. So if you have your own opinions, agreement or disagreement, let me know. And I'm sorry, sir. It's time for you to leave.